All right. Um, so thank you again for joining us this evening to um, hear about the brief history of Belmont Public Belmont Redwood Shores Public Schools from 1860 to 1965. We are so excited to have um, two um, uh, folks from the Belmont Historical Society join us this evening. Carl Middlestat and uh, Rose Laughlin are going to be um, uh, sharing um, the history of the schools and how the Redwood Belmont Redwood Shores School District came to be. Uh, for those that are participating online, thank you so much for joining us. And um, you will be able to communicate with the speakers through the Q&A um, portion of the Zoom portal. Um, we have disabled chat. So again, thank you for joining us. And I'm going to hand it off to Rose and Carl. Good evening. Um, again, I'm Carl Middlestad and here with Rose Laughlin. Uh, we're both members of the Belmont Historical Society and we'll be presenting a brief history of the early days of the Belmont Redwood Shore School District, the Belmont School District as it was known then. Uh, I wanna emphasize that the presentation is not the complete story of the district. Uh, we are continuing our, continuing our research on the more recent history and we'll put together another program sometime next year. Um, in the late 1950s and early, eight, I'm sorry, in the early, in the late 1850s and early 1860s, Belmont's population was approximately 150 people. Um, Belmont's population was concentrated along the quote, transportation corridor along County Road. Um, this is before El Camino existed. Uh, by 1864, trains began to provide service to the peninsula and the population began to grow creating the need for a larger school. Slide. Uh, <clears throat> prior to the first public school, school was held in a private residence in the north end of town near San Mateo until 1864. At that time, a group of citizens petitioned the county to form the Belmont School District. Belmont's first public school was located on the corner of Old County Road and O'Neill Avenue. This school continued to serve the town until 1890. That building was moved to another location on County Road in 1889 and was eventually torn down in 1956. Slide. Uh, to orient you, um, the original school, the first Belmont school was down on County Road uh, where the cursor is, um, right there, right there. And also some of the streets, you can see Ralston Avenue in the center of the slide, <clears throat> uh, County Road at the bottom. <clears throat> and you'll notice on this slide that there's a Johnson Street. That would become El Camino in about 1918. Uh, El Camino did not exist. The main north-south route was uh, County Road. <clears throat> Right. <clears throat> um, here's a quote from uh, a longtime Belmont resident, Jane Barr Weld, uh, from her personal memoir. And the interesting point about this is that in the early days, due to impassable roads, schools closed in December and reopened in April to avoid the winter rains. Uh, roads apparently were just were impassable. Slide. Here's a quote from Kate Williams about the primitive conditions the students and teachers endured. This list of school supplies was taken from a 1941 news article written by Lewis Barrett. The supplies were purchased from the Emmett and O'Neill General store, store shown in the slide. The store was located on the northwest corner of County Road and Ralston Avenue. Um, most recently, in recent times, it was called the Country Store or Pink Building. Uh, serves as an antique shop for many years before it was removed for the grade separation project in 1995. <clears throat> in 
Much like today, the public school provided a place for the community to gather for social functions. Uh, the newspaper article on the right mentions a strawberry and ice cream festival that was held at the school as a fundraiser for both the school and the new Episcopal church in 1875. Now uh, we moved to Belmont's second public school. In the late 1880s, uh, Belmont's population continued to expand. And in, by 1890, a new building replaced the school at the same location at the corner of County Road and O'Neill Avenue. This two-story building included four classrooms and served Belmont for 27 years until 1917. It was located at the site of the it was located at the current site of the Windy Hill residential complex currently under construction. Um, if you look on the far right side of the photo, there's a hill in the background uh, behind the fence, oak trees on it. That was called Red Rock Hill or New Halls Hill. Um, it's not there anymore. Uh, it was removed to provide fill for the Bayshore Highway back in the 1920s and 30s. Um, currently, that's the area, an industrial area off Old County Road and, and Quarry Road in actually San Carlos. Here's another view of the second school with a quote from Doris Van Eer. Uh, again, an old, long-time resident of Belmont. Uh, see, they, they used a common dipper, and uh, they didn't have drinking fountains at the, in those days, so they shared a dipper for drinking water. Sorry. Um, These Belmont school registers uh, we acquired recently, a total of 72 from the Belmont Red Mature School District. And we'd like to thank uh, Superintendent Dan DeGuara for loaning them to us. Uh, we have those on file at the history room. And they're interesting uh, documents. Uh, they, were, they were published and provided by the uh, State Department of Education at the time, uh, containing rules, regulations for Belmont public, or, California schools up and down the state. Instructions for teachers, they kept attendance records in there, uh, lists of school supplies and honor roll, as well as the corporal punishment log. In addition to the rest of the conditions, corporal punishment was common in the school. This slide shows a list from 1872 and 1873 of infractions by students and the number of strokes received as punishment. Attendance records from the time show a student population of approximately 36. Now we turn to Belmont's third public school, um, 18, 1918 through 1963. It's gone the next one. Um, located on Waltemar Avenue between 6th Avenue and El Camino, this is where the downtown Safeway is today. Uh, face face Waltemar Street. Uh, this school continued to operate until uh, 1963 when it was finally shut down because of uh, essentially seismic issues. Slide. Here's an aerial view of downtown Belmont from the late 1950s. And you can see, uh, following the cursor, you can see El Camino Real through there, Ralston Avenue towards the bottom of the screen. And then Sixth Avenue comes right off there, all the way through. And then the school sat on that, that lot right there. That's the school, that's the outline of the school right there. Again, that is where today's Safeway is. Next. Um, the two photos on the left 
uh, I'm sorry, the two photos on the left and right show a view of the playground taken from Sixth Avenue. Uh, this is right in front of Belmont City Hall. Uh, the school, the uh, photo in the middle is just a close up of the entrance, Belmont Public School. The next two slides represent a dark uh, chapter in our history, not just in Belmont, but nationwide. In this 1940 class photo, you will notice a number of Asian American children. With the start of World War II, uh, people of Japanese descent were incarcerated in concentration camps uh, from 1942 through 1946. Many of them were American citizens. And this, 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 uh, this class is from the third Belmont school that's uh, on Waltemeyer Street. Next slide. And this slide from 1947. Um, this uh, represents the fact that those uh, Asian American children had not returned to schools in Belmont. Kind of a very uh, sad time. Belmont served, was served by one school for 85 years. With the increasing population, the need for another school saw the opening of Barrett School on Belvern Drive in 1948. At that time, the Belmont School in the downtown area was renamed Central School to distinguish the two. Um, you can see the population in 1945, right after the war was about 3,000 and 25 years later jumped to 24,000. Huge growth. Um, subdivisions, uh, Sterling Downs, um, the Carl Mont, Chula Vista neighborhood, uh, and the Cipriani neighborhood uh, showed rapid growth. Slide. In the next 17 years, eight more schools would be open, including six elementary schools, a middle school, and a high school. Prior to the opening of Carlmont High School, Belmont students attended Sequoia High School in Redwood City. The list of schools on the slide reflects the rapid growth of the community uh, after World War II. Sure. How was the list Barrett? Who was Lewis Barrett? Yeah, Lewis Barrett was um, a well-known individual. He moved into Belmont in the early part of the 1980s. 20th century. Um, he was a forester by trade, but got involved in every aspect of the growth of Belmont. He was on a, a sanitary board, city council, he was mayor, he was involved with the school board at the time. Um, and that's why they named the school after him, because he was a very prominent individual. John McDougall uh, was a California's second governor like in the 1850s. He had a home uh, in what is now Twin Pines Park. The, the home's long gone. Uh, and again, that's another historic figure. Another slide. All right, that concludes the presentation on the early, early history of the school district. Uh, there's more to follow as we continue our research on the story of the district as it continued to grow and ultimately became the Belmont Redwood Shore School District. Uh, we encourage everyone to contact the Historical Society with questions, or if you have items that might be of historic interest, let us know, photos, uh, old documents, letters, uh, and artifacts. Uh, we, we'd love to get those things. So with that, um, we're happy to answer any questions. Is the central school of today that's different than the central school of back then? Right. It's, the central school of today is on Middle Road, right. and the, the original central school was the one at the Safeway site. Can you go back to the slide with the second or third slide of the map?
A long county road at the bottom. Along Ralston. Oh, on Ralston. Yes, those are homes. Yes. Oh. Yeah. So those were, those those lots were to get up at that point. Right. Right. Oh. Yeah. Well, this was a real estate brochure, actually. So I think they were dividing the lots and hoping to sell them. Not everyone had homes on it. Mm -hmm. The buildings that are shown were there at the time. Yes. Yes. But the rest Over of the lots here, were just buildings. a subdivision. Narrow 25 foot lots. Small Street. Small Street, right. That was a, a an old resident, and that became Sixth Avenue. Oh, that's Sixth Avenue. That's Sixth, right. Oh, I'm trying to figure this out where this was. Because that's Sixth Avenue. Because it got to the Alameda. Right. Mm -hmm. right. So where the number three is, that's kind of, that would be Sixth Avenue. Exactly. Yeah, that, that parcel or that block in the center is the Safeway parcel. So did the did the alternative of those um, exist? The fence that the map doesn't show it. Probably it was not there. What's that? Oh, El Camino. No. no, El Camino didn't exist. Yeah, interesting. Yes. Did it not exist further on? I guess it must have been either sixth. Um, I don't know how far it came down. Um, I, I know in San Mateo they were building it in 1917. Yeah, I, so I think they just they built it in increments and. Work they were way, their way down the peninsula. Ah, okay. But I, I think um, you missed the, the discussion about the slide. The old the county road Correct. that's along the bottom. That was that yeah. was the the thoroughfare. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so I do have one question uh, from um, Why did Belmont and Rhode Shores join into a single school district? Okay. Um, we'll take a stab at that, but we'll do some more research. Um, Redwood Shores was developed in the 70s and 80s and 90s. And originally, Sandpiper School was the first school built out there. Uh, it, it was a great distance from Redwood City, uh, difficult to get to it. Uh, so the powers that be sat down and uh, organized uh, a new school district, so to speak, the Belmont Redwood Source School District. And it's been that way ever since. Uh, in 1997, the uh, Redwood Shores School uh, was, was opened up. Do you know the story of why Belmont didn't take that? You really think Belmont's own Redwood Shores? Why didn't we yeah. take that? Do you know that story? Um, yes, um, a bit. Uh, at the time, back in the 50s and 60s, that, that area was just wetlands. Mm -hmm. Very little out there. I think it was a radio station way out at the end, right on the bay. And the thought in Belmont, and I've heard this from several folks, is that who wants those mudflats? Mm -hmm. So uh, Redwood City saw an opportunity, and it was annexed into Redwood City uh, years ago, many years ago. Um, no, are there um, folks that are attending um, via Zoom? If you have any more questions, go ahead and type them into the Q and A portion here. Do you know any specifics about the current uh, numbers of kids in Belmont School District today? No, I don't. Yeah. I know it's, it grew so much that one thought that you had said, and I was just wondering where we are now in our curve. Mm -hmm. uh, I can jump ahead a little bit uh, to a future presentation. But in the early 80s, uh, this, the school population declined drastically, fairly rapidly. So the school, Belmont School District at the time closed um, McDougal School, Cipriani School, and Barrett School. Uh, they sold McDougal to Armstrong School, which is still in operation today. Uh, Cipriani uh, was leased for a few years to different offices. I think the county had some offices in there. And then Barrett School was leased to the city of Belmont for a community center. 
again, which is there today. In 1990, the city actually bought the, the property and it became uh, Belmont's community center. And that's going to be our another one. Someday. That, um, stay tuned for more news on that. Maybe that will be another great presentation yeah. topic for uh, and uh, to tell that story about how how that came to be and where we where it can go. Yeah, that's yeah. actually a great suggestion. That's really good. I'd like to know. Yeah. 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 I don't have any other questions here online. Anybody else? You have a question, you ladies? Yeah. When did it update of Compton Suspense like 1918? Um, well, on this map, you see Johnson Street on there the, towards the bottom. That is where El Camino was built. So what it, what it did is they it went all the way through from San Mateo to San Carlos. Mm -hmm. um, whether that was paved or not, I don't know. But the El Camino that's referred to as the pathway between the missions right. was sort of a series of trails that, mm -hmm. you know, people don't exactly know where they were. And then when they made El Camino, it was actually just made as a straight road. It didn't follow the trail. Mm -hmm. But the railroad was there already, right? It's Belmont Station, so. Was that from San Francisco over to San Jose and beyond? Uh, at least to San Jose, 1864. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. Oh, that's yeah. Cool. yeah, it's old. Well, yeah. Southern Pacific? Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. And was it passenger, you know, passenger and freight? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh. Yeah. Could you maybe just because we're talking about the train station, talk a little bit about the train station and Going into Park. Yeah, that's a good story. Uh, in the 1860s, uh, Carl Janke uh, purchased the land that's basically now Twin Pines Park, and he called it Belmont Park and Picnic Grounds. Um, they sponsored uh, trips of uh, folks from San Francisco to come down and have large picnics in the area, as many as 10,000 people wow. at, at a given time, yeah. huge, huge picnic grounds. The, the, the park went all the way up the hill towards Chula Vista, but to give you an idea of how big it was, um, wow. from where Twin Pines is today, up Ralston and up the hill. Um, sometime in about the 1870s, things got out of hand. Um, <laughs> people were coming down in uh, excessive drinking. Uh, they get back on the trains and destroy the trains on the way back to San Francisco. So at that point, SP said, you know, we're done. Uh, no more of these trips. So then the, the park dwindled and obviously closed up. And then when did, so the city of Belmont own that whole thing up through there? Did they then sell off the piece that had Twin Pines? Well, um, okay. you're familiar with Twin Pines today. Yeah. And it goes straight up the hill to the homes of, above it up on Talburn Drive. Then next to Twin Pines is the Silverado. Right. Uh, their property also goes straight up the hill. So they, they own that. So did the Silverado part of Twin Pines Park before? I mean, was part of that Belmont Park before? Yes. Oh, yes. Right. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. There's remnants of an old uh, road, really a pathway. It goes all the way to the top of the hill. We we walked it and just switched backs all the way up the hill. Oh. Historic remnant. But the city sort of rallied to buy the park land. Yeah. In 1972, um, the, the voters passed a bond to buy Twin Pines Park. Uh, it was slated for development. It would be offices, oh. apartments, wow. and which it passed by 85 percent. Yeah. People really really wanted to save it. Fortunately, for all of us. So I have one, one other question here. Was there any, any damage to the school building, any of the school buildings from that 06 quake? Was this in Belmont in general? Any, any mm. or school damage? Good question. Okay. Again, yeah, good, good question. Uh, we don't have any evidence of that. Uh, 
generally wood frame buildings uh, stand up better than, than brick and the, the building at the time uh, was wood frame. Mm -hmm. There's a picture up there where the shopping center is now. When did all his homes <laughs> get sold in the shopping center? Maybe they were uh, where Safeway is. I don't think they were homes. I think they were just parcels. Oh, I just yeah, look like a parcel. They're parcels, right? Yeah. They probably weren't homes built there, right? Where it says two, three, and four. Yeah. Mm -hmm. These are homes here where the cursor is. So these were buildings. Yeah. The other ones are just parcels. Some of which might have been built on, but maybe not all right. of them. But right. This dates from 1885. Mm -hmm. The parcels are somewhat smaller compared to the existing. Oh, yeah. And what are the buildings? Is this Johnson residence? Yeah, the, oh, the, so they're just people, rich people. Well, the, can you point out the hotels in the corner? Sure. Um, on County Road and Molson Avenue, uh, there were hotels and uh, stores. Um, there, the Belmont Hotel was near at the Cursor. Uh, that was built in the 1870s. 1850s. 1850s, sorry. Right? And then a, a kitty corner to that was the American Hotel, uh, right over there. Then the, the store that we mentioned, the general store, it's labeled as a grocery store there, uh, was was built on that corner. That that was the one that survived until the 1990s. Uh, and then along old uh, along County Road, uh, as you head towards school, there were a mix of residences and businesses in there. Uh, you know, they didn't have zoning back then. Uh, it was whatever someone wanted to build. Uh, one one could think to note. Um, on County Road, it's, there's a church as identified right above that uh, large highlighted arrow right there. Um, that was the Episcopal Church, and it was moved um, sometime in the 1930s over to Fifth Avenue. That, that was the original location of it. Fifth, Fifth Avenue. Fifth Avenue is right across the street from the new firehouse development. Oh. Belmont, old Belmont City oh, Hall. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Parallels El Camino. Right. Yeah. The church is still there. Yeah. It's little hands. Yeah, yeah right. Mm -hmm. Was there a firehouse? Was there a firehouse yet, right? In this the firehouse as we know it that became part of firehouse square was built in the 30s. Oh, in the 30s. Mm -hmm. Okay. Let me ask some questions about the general fund lines. Do we know about, I was always curious about the naming of the south road and the middle road and north road. Uh, well, they're, they're shown in this. this. This goes back to the 1880s. And you can see south road up in that corner. Mm -hmm. And there are maps that show north and middle road at that time. I think it just had to do with their geographic location, you know, middle, north, and south. They all seem to come together. At Up at Notre Dame. So oh, okay. yeah. Yep. Also, if you go to the, uh, the next slide, I thought it was interesting that it says there were hard winters. Look, what, what, where was Belmont back then? <laughs> How was, were there hard winters? Well, we get we get rain. We get rain. Yeah, yes. but we have we have paved roads today. I guess we don't. And this, right? they were talking mostly about the folks that lived up in the hills. There were a lot of ranches and farms up in the western hills, yeah. all the way out towards uh, what is now uh, Paul Hemus Road, uh, the far end of Ralston. And those roads, it, when they got muddy, were impassable. I see. So for a number of years, they had a they uh, had the schools. Uh, basically during the spring and fall. Mm -hmm. 
Can you go back to the slide about the, the punishment? And oh, yeah, let's see, let's just spend a little time on that because that's so great. <laughs> There we go. I like that. So, odd, odd Rolling stones at small ones. That's yeah. so great. Mm -hmm. you know, a book. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Lighting fires on the bridge. <laughs> Those are the O'Neill boys, I believe. Um, oh, really? So, it could have been going out to the sloughs because their oh. father owned the wharf. Out oh. in the sloughs. Oh, I see their name quite often. Uh huh. They're re list. repeat the offenders. The ones for the ones. Okay. Okay. Impudence. Impudence. Climbing out of the window. <laughs> <laughs> That's a meal voice. <laughs> short small segment and then never again oh and no really? one ever had them use it oh really. interesting. so it's going to be hard for them to read that yeah yeah my they're daughter's not going to read that they're not going to need to read that everyone takes now yeah, yeah exactly <laughs> exactly did you read them all the um i had issues with the eyes that's a good question that's a good question it's from october 5th john Pandemic made it worse because in the pandemic they were typing that there's no need to handwrite anything. Right. Mm -hmm. Sorry. But you're right, the, the history that's lost that the people yes. yeah. yeah. we'll need a Rosetta Stone of our own. Mm -hmm. Rosetta Stone. That's great. That is great. Yeah. That's great. And how much it lasted for the place? Well, they call them strokes. So if you look right here, four strokes. Oh, and then you go down. The worst was the 25. Something is fighting it. Throwing rocks at the swallows, I think. Wow. Mm -hmm. Is it ruler, I guess? Uh, the whip, we think that was on the school supply list. Oh, was there a whip on the school supply list? It's actually in those registers that we got. It says the rawhide whip. Mm -hmm. Oh, that was another whip that I had on the school supply list. What is the Bible Chalk either right on the slate versus to write on paper. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's chalk. Um, slate pencil might be chalk. Chalk. Yeah. Oh, that's a good idea. That was a beautiful name. Yeah. yeah. So it's, yeah. So I wonder if they call chalk a slate pencil. Maybe. Possibly. Mm -hmm. oh. And a water dipper. Uh -huh. Yep. It was a common water dipper. They all shared it. A bar of soap. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, I mean, it's great Kleenexes and all wipes and all sorts of things to classrooms now. So that's not the. I guess. Um, but these were things the students had to bring? No, these were provided by the school. This was the teacher's list on the back of one of the registers. They bought things a few times a year, okay. at least according to the register. Yeah. Was it like one? I suspect that's for the teacher. The children probably use the pencils and the slate pencils. Yeah. Is that a little kid on the ground? <laughs> <laughs> one of the O'Neill boys. <laughs> that's a that's a dog. That's a dog. Oh. Uh, there, that picture has a, a famous person in it. Uh, on the far right, a uh, man is sitting in a carriage. That's Simon Mezzi's, uh, who was very influential. Uh, he represented the Arguello family that owned the Colgus Ranchero, 35,000 acres. 
and he represented them. He was an attorney, and he represented them as they started to sell off the properties. And his home was in Belmont, um, somewhere right off South Road. Uh, he lived here in Belmont. Yeah, there's yeah. Street. And Emmett, so there was the Emmett house that moved. Right? Is that the Emmett from the Emmett house that yeah. moved? Same family. Wait a minute. I'm just moving the house. There's a there's footage of it. Is there? Yeah. Right? Isn't that on YouTube or but somewhere else? I can see there. The movie of that? There's a house. video movie of the yeah, I'm sure there the is. House is on yeah. YouTube. Yeah. They moved the whole house. Yeah, from one place to another from Belmont. Oh, yeah. You can see the house. You can see the house. something early next year we're mm -hmm. trying to put uh, some of the uh, displays back together and it takes a lot of time we're doing a lot of research the more we dip, dive into things uh, we're finding uh, that the story is not exactly what we were told uh -huh. over the years. things have changed so we, want to, we want to do it right and volunteers. we're going to need volunteers for, for docents uh, coming up and what could we like we'd like to open up uh, Sundays and Wednesdays for about three hours each, each day. And we'll need docents for that. We're also looking at volunteers to do, uh, could do a, a, a newsletter to have the skills to do that. Um, and also help us with some of our uh, digital archive. So if anyone's interested in that, let us know. Tell you a little bit about that because I went to Ralston. Oh, okay. um, <clears throat> I went up there in uh, 61, 62, 63 school year, and uh, I don't remember seeing any bikes. Okay. Yeah. Um, if you live down here, Ralston Avenue is, is a bear to climb. Um, and it, so, in those days, uh, Hallmark, uh, Belmont Heights didn't exist. So most of the development was down here or sick behind it. So I, I don't remember seeing any bike. We, we took buses to school. The school district provided buses. School buses? School buses. Yeah. 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 So um, how about when if I were to look, were look in the 70s, I've heard rumors that there was a more active cycling contingent back then. And I'd like to verify whether that's true or just stories. Yeah. Don't know. If the house is beyond Ralston Middle School, we weren't developed. Yet, but it seems like in, I think it's like 1965 Fox Elementary was established. Mm -hmm. So, who did it serve? If well, that's in 65, uh, that early 60s, that's when um, Hallmark was just starting to be built. Oh. We built it in, I think, three units. Uh, first went off Ralston and moved their way up the hill. Uh, and they were anticipating that development. That's why they built the school in 65. Mm -hmm. And a lot of the houses. Below that, by the Palmer, all those kids, my father. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so there were all those people there. 
they're not that far from golf there. And what about the um, sort of Christian drive to Belmont? Was that they were built in 62, 63 time frame? So they would have also been. They would go to Fox for sure. Uh, yeah. <clears throat> Well, thank All right. you. Thank, thank you. For folks to take care of here. Thank you very much.